the sacrifice your introduction. Uh, so, uh, good morning, good noon, and good evening, my SGT friends from all over the world. Uh, I'm Helen Lee from South Tech, Southern University of uh, uh, Science and Technology, uh, located in Shenzhen. Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to have this opportunity to introduce the uh, uh, SGD work of my Chinese colleagues and uh, of uh, uh, ourselves. Uh, first of all, I would uh, express uh, uh, my hearty thanks to Dr. Isaac Santos for his outstanding organization of these SGD seminar series which are very helpful and effective to our community. Uh, so today, my talk will focus on SGD estimations based on radium and the radium methods in China. And my talk will include three parts. First is our own contributions. Uh, so before starting, I would like to introduce some basic terminology in this talk. That is SGD, SFGD, and uh, RSGD. And uh, we assume that uh, SGD is composed of uh, SFGD, uh, which is from inland area, or originated from rainfall and the surface, uh, inland surface water, such as rivers and the lakes, and the recirculated re saline groundwater which is originated from the seawater. Uh, first, let's introduce uh, uh, the contributions of uh, our own uh, group. Uh, we will introduce two important contributions. Uh, the first one is that we uh, propose a new uh, equation to estimate uh, SFGD using the salinity in the seawater, in uh, river water, and uh, coastal groundwater is traces. Uh, and the second uh, part is the quantitative analysis of the effects of uh, ISGD induced uh, radium and radium symptoms on SGD estimation accuracy. Uh, so we also did a, a lot of work, uh, field work. Uh, for applications. Uh, this uh, area includes the Bohe, the whole Bohe Sea, uh, which includes three major bays uh, like Leidu Bay, uh, Bohe Bay, and the Liodong Bay. And also as small, uh, typical, uh, two small typical bays, you know, which is uh, located near Qingdao City, uh, Jiaozhu Bay, and uh, the last one is Daya Bay, uh, which is near Hong Kong and uh, Shenzhen City. So now let's uh, introduce the first uh, contribution. We proposed this equation, which can be used to estimate uh, uh, submarine fresh uh, uh, groundwater discharge uh, using, using salinity as a tracer. You know, this, this equation is uh, yeah, relatively simple. Uh, here, Q, SFGD, is the flux of SFGD, and the TF is the flushing time, or apparent water age, or water residence, residence time, which can be obtained by any other methods, for example, uh, radium and rhythm best balance models, or tidal prism models. And here we bay is the seawater volume of the bay, and the MS is the total salt mass stored in the bay, and the SS is the uh, salinity and the member of the open sea water, and the ET and the e, uh, PT are the evaporation and the precipitation rate of the whole bay, and the Q rivers here is the total recharge rate of all the rivers into the bay. And uh, this equation has been widely used by our uh, works. For example, here we listed the four uh, publications. And here we would like to introduce an uh, uh, interesting application in Leidu Bay. Uh, this is the basic information of our uh, sampling. 
uh, the location is laid to be is the uh, surface bay of the Hobohe Sea, and the, which is about uh, has an area of about 7,000 kilometers uh, square kilometers. And uh, we take samples uh, in 2002 and 2014 for dry season and uh, 2012 for wet season. And uh, every time we have uh, 58 sampling stations, uh, we uh, analyze the chemicals such as the radic and uh, also, also the, the radic quartet for, uh, for laboratory measurements. And uh, here is the data. Uh, the activities of the radium quartet versus uh, salinity in seawater uh, for different sea uh, for, for different seasons for the dry and the wet seasons. One, we we can see that the radium activity is significantly greater in wet season in, than in dry season. These red colors uh, represent wet season and the black colors for dry 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 season. And uh, the activity of the radium quartet decreases uh, as the salinity increases. And the salinity also have great, uh, have significant differences from the two seasons. Uh, that is, in wet season, it's much smaller and then in dry season. Uh, we all, I would just uh, show the results. Uh, we use the data. Uh, and the method uh, estimates the, the flushing time, SGT flux and the SFGT flux. Uh, and we find that there are no uh, significant difference in SGTs between dry and wet seasons, and also no significant, uh, so significant difference in SFGTs between dry and wet seasons. Uh, but we found that uh, SFGT both in dry and wet seasons are comparable to uh, annually average the Yellow River recharge rate, which equals so much. Uh, now let's introduce uh, the second uh, uh, theoretical uh, contribution of uh, ours, uh, that is quantitative analysis of the effects of uh, SGD induced radium radon sink storms on SGD estimation accuracy. So here is the uh, <coughs> schematic of the SGD, which is composed by SFGD and the ISGD. And uh, for, for introducing, I first uh, introduced two important uh, uh, concentrations. AMS, which is, is defined the concentration or activity of a chemical in near shore seawater here, near shore seawater and uh, A groundwater, AGW, which is defined as the concentration of a chemical in groundwater, uh, such as the tracers or nutrients and the metals. Uh, usually we have uh, uh, A groundwater uh, greater than AS. Using these uh, notations, we found that uh, uh, for ISGD, when I, when the seawater enters the aquifer, it will take away uh, the traces with the concentration of ANS. But when it uh, uh, enters the, back to the seawater from the aquifer, the concentration uh, is changed into AGW, which is much greater than ANS. Thus, uh, we have a so-called sink term which equals RSGD times ANS. Uh, in several previous radium and radium mass balance models, uh, this term is, neglect, uh, is ignored, uh, which may lead into the un uh, underestimation of SGD and the increasement of uncertainty in estimating chemical fluxes via SGD. So, in order to uh, compare the two, uh, compare the 
uh, analyze the uh, uh, losses by the RSGD, we uh, consider the old and the new uh, state state uh, mass balance models here. Uh, we define that the old model ignores this term, but the new model has this term. And then we compare the uh, the SDD estimates and the relative errors. In order to compare them, we conducted case study at uh, uh, sorry. We con Conducted case study in Jeju Bay. Uh, here is the basic information. Uh, this bay is uh, uh, relatively smaller, much smaller than Ledu Bay. Uh, the area of this bay is around 300 square kilometers. And the other data are shown uh, here. I will not uh, read them one by one. Uh, and uh, also, we also reanalyzed the data from previous uh, 36 case studies by conducted by other colleagues, uh, which are marked here uh, from A to Z. Uh, they are equal, the number of these case studies uh, <laughs> coincided with the uh, later numbers, 30, uh, 26. And then, uh, we summarized the results here. Uh, here we show the changes of the relative error IE uh, with the tracer activity ratio AR. Here is the definition of IE. It's the relative error in percentage of the SGD fluxes estimated by the old and the new models. Uh, and uh, on the horizontal axis, is the uh, relative or the ratio of activities mm -hmm. because they are near shore uh, activity uh, to the groundwater activity. And on the vertical axis is the relative error. And here we have two curves, uh, the uh, black line curve and the blue line curve. These two curves are theoretical uh, results we derived mathematically from the equations, which corresponds to the uh, values of RF. Uh, first, these uh, uh, black lines equal RF equal to zero, and uh, for blue lines, RF equal to 0.2. Usually, RF ranges from zero to 0.2. RF is defined uh, as the ratio of the SFGD flux to uh, SGD flux. Uh, and then we can find that uh, all the 31 case studies here are uh, located in, uh, inside the two curves. This means uh, our analytical analysis is uh, uh, accurate. And, uh, and uh, here we have some the following three observations from the figure. First, the data analysis of the 31 typical case studies show that the old models and its estimated SGD uh, by about 2 to 93 percent, with the average of about 33 percent. And the relative error of the end estimation of SGD approximately equals the activity ratio. AR, which uh, uh, is defined as the tracer activity ratio of near shore seawater to groundwater. And uh, another important uh, conclusion is that the longer the half life of the tracers, uh, the larger the ratio AR. Uh, so here is another application of our results in Bohe Bay. Uh, here, this figure shows the location of Bohe Bay and our sampling stations. Uh, in Bohe Bay, we analyzed the heavy meat fluxes uh, via SGD, and uh, we found that uh, heavy meat concentrations such as iron, 
magnesium, zinc, and the chromium between the first and the third quartiles are distinctly higher in groundwater than in seawater. And the SGD derived heavy metal fluxes are several, uh, several orders of magnitude, magnitude greater than the riverine heavy metal fluxes. Uh, thus, we found that uh, uh, SGD is a dominant source of the dissolved heavy metals in Hohe Bay. And uh, here is another application in Daya Bay. Uh, and here is the simply information for this bay. We uh, measured both isotopes and the nutrients here. And here is the result. Uh, we compared the nutrient fluxes from SGD and from uh, uh, local rivers and also from atmospheres and the sediments. Uh, we found that uh, uh, the total nutrient flux has such a ranks here and the nitrate, uh, nitrogen flux has uh, such a, a ranks here. And for DIP flux, uh, river has a account for 70%, 70 percent, 75 percent, which is larger than SGD. And for the silicon flux, we have such a uh, ranks. Uh, so this is the end of this uh, section. For this section, we would I would like uh, acknowledge the uh, following universities and also Professor Moore. Uh, Professor Isaac Santos and Jamie Zhou and uh, Dr. Xin Luo and also my team from Wuhan, Beijing and Shenzhen, uh, including uh, research assistant professors, postdocs and the PhD and the master students. And also uh, funds from uh, NSFC and from the uh, National Basic Research Program, uh, which is called also uh, Nine seven three. <laughs> so now I would like to move to the second part. Uh, the second part is about the summary of uh, about forty case studies in China by other colleagues. So here, uh, suggested by Dr. Isaac, we summarized more than 40 SGD studies uh, from the mainland China coastline, uh, which all mainly includes these uh, case studies in this table. And uh, we found that all these studies uh, covered the whole coastline of the mainland China. Uh, even with some uh, small overlaps. Uh, if we ignore the signal differences, uh, then we can make a China scale SGD estimation. Uh, here's the result. We compared the SGD uh, of China with the global scale, we found that uh, from the three figures and uh, the global scale three uh, numbers, we can see that along the China coastline, the total SGD is about five times greater than the freshwater fluxes uh, by rivers. And the magnitude of SGD accounted for about five to nine percent of the global SGD flux. And here is the nutrient fluxes by SGD uh, along the mainland China coastlines. We found that uh, the nutrient fluxes by SGD of China were one order of magnitude higher than the riverine inputs. Uh, here is the concrete numbers uh, or data. And uh, these nutrient fluxes from SGD contributes to more than 50% of the total nutrients into the Chinese coastal waters and about 60% of the phosphorus required by the primary production. Uh, here we also analyzed the 
DIN, DIP, ratios in SGD along the whole mainland China coastline, coastline uh, which ranges from 13 to about uh, more than 800 uh, with the average of one to one. And the DIN, DIP ratio in four major seas, uh, Sea, Yellow Sea, East China Sea and the East China, uh, uh, South China Sea uh, ranges from uh, 30 to 180, with an average of about 70. So we found that uh, in general, DIN and DIP ratio in SGD was significantly higher than the red, red field ratio, uh, that is 16, with important implications for phytoplankton growth and structure. And uh, large inputs of in nutrients via SGD with the high DIN and the DIP ratios have uh, important influences on nutrient budgets and the primary production of coastal waters, both in small and large scales. Uh, so this is the end of this uh, second part. For this part, uh, we uh, particularly thanks uh, the following uh, professors or uh, IPs. Uh, Professor Ping He Tai from Xiamen University, also Dai Minghan professor, and uh, uh, Professor Jin Zhou Du from East China Normal University, and uh, Professor Zhang Rongguo and Professor Zhu Jimmy Zhou. Uh, Dr. Xin Luo and uh, Professor uh, Gui Zhi Wang and uh, uh, Professor Guo Chou Xu and uh, pro, uh, Professor Li, Li, Xin, Li Xin Yi from Nankai University and also their group members. So let's move to the challenges. Here, uh, I According to my understanding, uh, the modeling uncertainties in SGD mainly comes from the following two aspects. First is the steady state approximations of many unsteady state processes. For example, the seawater flow, which is obviously uh, unsteady state, which is caused by tides, waves, rivers, storms, and rainfalls, etc. And also for the sampling, uh, the isotope activity uh, also cha always changes with the sampling time, even at the same location due to the sea water flow. And the second uh, uh, part uh, is the great uncertainty in groundwater and the member. Uh, the magnitude of the uh, changes with the wide value ranges, often over one order of magnitude. And the reasons of this uh, great uncertainty uh, is mainly due to highly heterogeneous and complex coastal hydrogeological conditions. Uh, here is an example. Uh, we simulated the seafloor. Here is the surface seafloor of Daya Bay. One can see uh, it's very complex with uh, many currents here, here, and here. Here is a small island. Uh, and here we have more details uh, from for spring, summer, and the winter. And also in spatial, uh, we have both surface and the bottom. One can see that uh, the sea flow changes both with time and with locations. Uh, how to solve these problems? Here I would like to make a, uh, make a attempt and give some rough ideas to improve or solve these problems. Uh, we, I will take uh, uh, radium 226 in Daya Bay as an example. And first, we classify the coastline according to its hydrogeological conditions uh, or sediment environment uh, into 
several, which is defined by the number n, several uh, n type, uh, typical types. For example, we have mangroves, tidal marsh, tidal mud flat, and sand beach, uh, gravel beach, or bedrock, etc. Then we use different groundwater and the member uh, for different coastline type, which is determined based on field sampling and the laboratory measurements. Then also uh, we assume that uh, the total SGT flux on the R type of coastline is a phi. Uh, this is unknown to be determined. Then the total SGD uh, equal to this equation uh, is defined by this simple equation. And uh, the uh, radium input via SGD from the I type of coastline uh, is uh, the product of AI and AFI. And the total SGD input flux of the radium uh, into the bay is given by this equation. So here we did not know this. Uh, this number, how to uh, find it, find them. It's, uh, uh, in order to find the values of these uh, uh, n numbers, f1 to fn, we need a numerical model which uh, can simulate the seawater flow in the bay uh, with boundary conditions along the coastline related to SGD fluxes and the groundwater activities. Uh, at different types of, co of the coastlines. Then we minimize the following objective functions, which is a least square objective function. In this uh, uh, equation, we have this uh, n station uh, is the total number of the sampling stations. And the MJ here is the total number of sampling times at the given GIF sampling station, and uh, XJ, YJ, ZJ is the location coordinates of the GIF sampling station, uh, with J uh, equal to one, two, until N station. And uh, T, J, K is the Kth sampling time at the GIF station. And uh, this term is very important. A sim X Y Z T, which can be obtained at any uh, location in the bay and at any time uh, by the numerical simulation model. Uh, and this is the observations uh, by field sampling and the laboratory measurements. So to solve this uh, problem, we need to uh, uh, high high-speed uh, computers and uh, with money effort in calculations. Uh, but on the other hand, such a least square approach can effectively filter various errors, both in the data and uh, numerical models. Uh, here is the preliminary numerical modeling for seawater flow and the radium and radium transport in Daya Bay. Uh, this uh, line, you, you can see the uh, meshes here. Uh, we find meshes. And uh, also, the, we have uh, preliminarily, temporarily have five kind of uh, coastal lines. And also, we have uh, uh, sampling stations here, many sampling stations, with S16 here and S13 here. We will show some results about these two stations later. Here, here is this uh, our preliminary simulation result. It shows how the uh, isotope activity changes uh, with time or with the tidal level. Uh, this uh, tidal level is the is the break uh, red line. Uh, this is the water level. And uh, this uh, blue line is the uh, radium 224 uh, activity. You can see the activity uh, varies significantly with tides. Uh, it's uh, station 13 and also 
it's a station 16. So I, I, I think uh, due to time limitation, I will just stop here. Uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks, Hai Long, for sharing uh, yeah, all of these insights and, and thoughts. So yeah, let's, uh, let's open the room for questions. Uh, who wants to jump in first? Uh, just unmute and, and ask your questions or raise your hands or send a, a message to the chat and I'll try to keep some sort of order. Nobody wants to be the first to ask a question. Maybe I'll throw a question, how long? Um, uh, so, you know, we always make just comparisons between SGG and rivers. Uh, I think my mm -hmm. question, maybe comments, how can we kind of, you know, uh, talk to people who are not part of this community uh, to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, justify and explain those comparisons between uh, SGG and rivers uh, do you have any experiences or thoughts based on, you know, conversations in China? Yes, uh, we have uh, a lot of such uh, uh, experiences. Experiences. Uh, experiences. Uh, in China, in the uh, water community, uh, most scientists uh, uh, just ignored the rules of groundwater played in environment. They often just uh, focused on surface water such as rivers and rainfalls uh, or lakes. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, this situation uh, is always improving uh, due to our support, due to our efforts. Uh, you can see uh, many people uh, come here from China in this talk. Uh, they are more, I think most of them are, uh, have the specialties in groundwater and uh, in every, almost every conference, uh, I emphasized uh, and for, for colleagues to, uh, to enhance the importance of groundwater uh, in uh, management and uh, also in prop, uh, in the in the whole whole, whole country or something like that. Okay. Thanks, Helen. So do we have uh, uh, somebody jumping? I think Gwizi was kind of unmuting. Is that right, Gwizi? Do you want to jump in? Hi. Uh, Lee, I think uh, you have a nice work and uh, a nice summary. Thank you including me. <laughs> and uh, I have a question actually about modeling. I think that's uh, an interesting side to deal with the uh, problems uh, that we're facing in studying SGD. Uh, I'm wondering that what's the governing equations you use to estimate the activity, for example, of radium uh, in your least square minimization? Uh -huh. Yeah, here due to time limitation, I just uh, simply ignored all the details for for this model, for how how, how to uh, obtain this uh, simulation result by you by a numerical model. Uh, in this equation, the governing equation here is the standard uh, Navier-Stokes equations uh, of of the surface water. Uh, but we used it uh, in three-dimensional uh, surface flow and including the density effects, which may influence the uh, densities, uh, also including the salinity of the uh, seawater, because the seawater has uh, significant uh, variations in salinity and uh, which cause the density variations and also uh, cause the flow direction changes. Uh, also, okay, so, we, add, yeah. uh, we added other uh, transport equations for, for the tracers, such as the radiums and other uh, 
nutrients. Okay, so it's the equations uh, for the flow dynamics, the basic yeah, equation. Yeah, yeah, but You yeah, just yeah. add chaser in it. Okay, right. okay, I um, see. Thank you. Uh -huh. 